everyone. So for today, I'm actually going to be showing you how to make this lovely little messenger bag tote. It actually, with a liner and everything sewn inside. And I wanted to also show you that, yes, this can be made in multiple different ways. Here is one. Uh, it's actually mine. I use it all the time. This one's also made from acrylic, but does not have a liner sewn inside. And this one used beads and a fringe to go all the way around, just like in the pattern that I have available in my Etsy store. The link for that will actually be in the description box uh, below the video. And just to show you another of this, this is actually one that I had made. I use this every single day. It was actually made with cotton yarn. So it's another one. I use the fringe and the beads for it. The one we're making today, I did not add the fringe to it, but for the fringe, you just follow your seam where we slip stitch together and you just attach a little fringe right onto there. And then if you want to attach some beads into it also, completely up to you. But I wanted to show you these and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, be sure to get a little thumbs up, like, or if you didn't, let me know either way. Uh, and also be sure to let me know what you think inside of the comments. And if you have yet to subscribe, go ahead and hit that little subscribe button and that notification bell next to it so you can get a heads up every time I post a new video. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy. All right, everyone. So for today's video, I'm making all the supplies that we'll need for this, we'll need a darning needle in order to weave in our ends. We'll need a pair of scissors. I'm actually using, to, probably going to use two different pairs of scissors. I prefer the smaller ones, just the snip ends of the yarn. But for cutting fabric later, I'll be showing you how to do the liner inside of this bag. I would recommend some fabric scissors. I'm going to be using a four and a half millimeter crochet hook for this tutorial. Yes, it is different than the one actually listed in the pattern, but because I am making this specific to a customer request for this bag, it is going to be slightly different. We'll need our selected uh, fabric for the inside liner. Now the liner is completely optional. Uh, this one was wanted. They wanted a red liner inside of it. So all we need to create this is a single fat quarter. Now, if you crochet a lot looser or want to do a higher gauge, like a heavier yarn or a larger hook, then you might need two. Um, for the size I'm making it, basically one of these is pretty much a perfect fit for it. And then we'll need our yarn. I'm just using some basic black acrylic yarn for this. And it uses, whenever I make them, it uses pretty much exactly two skeins of yarn. Although I do recommend go ahead and pick up two skeins of yarn. This is just a simple number four weight acrylic yarn. I'll actually put in the video description uh, where you can actually purchase uh, that exact yarn. And we're going to use a couple of welded metal rings. Now, some people like the D rings instead. This is so we can create our strap to be adjustable. Some prefer the D links, but um, the difficulty I've been having is finding welded D links. Um, I refuse to use anything, especially with crochet, if it's not a welded piece because I've had over and over and over the yarn starts working its way right through that teeny tiny opening so I make sure I get welded rings for it. To begin this project we're going to start and create our slip knot and then for round one we're going to want to start and chain 12. Right. 
now that we have our chain of 12, now for our second round, what we're going to be doing is we want to double crochet into the third chain from the end. So we got one, two, three. So we yarn over, go into the stitch. We're only working in one loop for this. Pull up a loop, yarn over, and then go through your first two loops on your hook and then yarn over and go through your last two loops on your hook. And then we want to double crochet once into the next eight stitches. All right, now on our last chain right here, what we want to put do is put six double crochets into that last chain. Three, four, five, And six. All right, now those six kind of pushed us towards the other side of that chain. And now working down the back side of the chain, what we want to do is put one double crochet into your next 10 stitches. And there we are, and that is round two. All right, and now to begin round three, from here on throughout the entire pattern, we're going to be working in back loops only. So from here, we want to chain two, then turn our work, and then we want to double crochet into the next nine stitches. So working in back loops, as you can see, here's our front loop, and then we have the back loop. So normally we'd work through two loops. Here we are, if I can pull them apart to show you a little better. We want to work into this back loop only. All right, now that we're here at the end, if you take a look closely, we're actually at the stitches. These are the six double crochets we made into that last chain. Still remember we're working in uh, back loops only. We're gonna put two double crochets into the next six stitches. So one, two, All right, now that we've done two double crochets into each of those six stitches, or that was a total, would have been 12 double crochets altogether into that area. Now we want to double crochet once into the next 10 stitches. And there we have round three. All right, and now for round four, once again, we chain two, turn our work, and then again, back loops only. We want to double crochet into the next nine stitches. So remember that stitch where our chain came out of, we just kind of skip over that one. 
one. All right, now if you look closely, we're on top of the stitches that we did two double crochets into one, just so you can keep track of where you're at. And now what we want to do during round four is we want to put two double crochets into each of the next 12 stitches. Alright, and now what we're going to do is put one double crochet into the next 10 stitches. And there we are. That is the end of round four. All right now for round five, once again, chain two turn your work and then what we want to do is double crochet into the next 14 stitches all right and now next what we want to do is double crochet two times into your first stitch and then we want to double crochet once into your next two stitches and we want to repeat that five times so two double crochets into your first one double crochet into your next two stitches and that's your first repeat and then two double crochets into your next and then one into the next two stitches and go ahead and repeat that three more times All right, now you have your five repeats of that. What we want to do is double crochet once into your next 14 stitches. All right, and there we are with round five. And now for round six, we're going to chain two turn the work and then we want to double crochet once into your next 14 stitches And then from here, what we're going to want to do, kind of like the last row, we want to do two double crochets into your first stitch, one double crochet into the next two stitches, but we want to repeat that instead of five, we're going to repeat it seven times. So two double crochets into your first, one double crochet into your next two stitches, and then go ahead and repeat that six more times. And then we want to finish off this row by doing one double crochet into your next 14 stitches oh, I'm sorry it goes into your next 13 
stitches, not 14 for that row or for the finishing up of that row. So 14 at the beginning, 13 at the very end, and then your repeats. And there is round six. And now if you notice, it is taking that little ribbed look to the entire bag. That's what the back loops only uh, does. It creates a little bit of a rib look. So it kind of creates a fun little pattern inside of it. But for round seven, we're going to chain two, turn our work, and then put one double crochet into your next 16 stitches. And then what we want to do is put two double crochets into your next stitch and then one double crochet into the next stitch. And we want to repeat that four times. So two double crochets into your first, one double crochet into the next, and repeat three more times. So a total of four of those repeats. All right, and then we want to put one double crochet into your next seven stitches. And then we want to do our repeats like we did before, four more of those. So two double crochets into your first stitch, one double crochet into your next stitch and repeat that three more times. All right, and then down this side to our end, we want to put one double crochet into your next 16 stitches. And there we are with round seven. All right, and now to begin round eight, chain two, turn your work, and then we want to double crochet one time into the next 18 stitches. And then into our next stitch, we want to put two double crochets into your first stitch and then one double crochet into the next stitch. And we want to do four repeats of those. So one and two into the one, one into the next, and go ahead and repeat that three more times. And then we want to put one double crochet into your next 11 stitches. And then we want to do those repeats again four more times. So two double crochets into your first stitch, one double crochet into your next and repeat three more times. And then we want to put one double crochet into your next 18 stitches. And there we are with round eight. All right, and now for round nine, chain two, turn, 
and double crochet into your next 18 stitches. And then what we're going to do is put two double crochets into your next stitch and then one double crochet into the stitch after that. And we want to repeat that four times. So one, two into your first, one into your second, and repeat that three more times. And then we're going to put one double crochet into your next 19 stitches. And then you want to do your repeats again four more times. So two double crochets into your first stitch, one double crochet into the next, and repeat it three more times. And then we want to do one double crochet into your next 18 stitches. And there we are at the end of round nine. All right, now for round 10, we chain two, turn, and then we want to double crochet once into your next 20 stitches. And then we want to put two double crochets into your first stitch, one double crochet into your second stitch, and we want to do four repeats of that. So one, two into your first, one into your second, and then repeat three more times. And then along the bottom here, we want to do one double crochet into your next 23 stitches. All right, and then we want to do four more of our repeats again down over here, so two double crochets into your first stitch, one double crochet into your next, and repeat that three more times. And then we want to put one double crochet into your next 23 stitch or I'm sorry, one double crochet into your next 20 stitches. And there we are, with round 10. All right. Now for round 11, we're going to chain two, turn our work, and then we're going to put one double crochet into your next 22 stitches. All right, and then we want to do uh, two double crochets into our next stitch and then one double crochet into the stitch after that, and we wanna do four repeats of that. So two double crochets into your first, 
one double crochet into the second and repeat that three more times. And then we want to put one double crochet into your next 27 stitches. And then you want to do your repeats again. So two double crochets into your first stitch, one double crochet into your next stitch, and repeat that three more times. And then we want to put one double crochet into the next 22 stitches to finish off the row. Okay, and there we are with the end of round 11. And now for round 12, we want to chain two, turn your work, and then we want to put one double crochet into your next 24 stitches. All right, and then what we want to do is put two double crochets into our first stitch. And then one double crochet into your next stitch. And we want to repeat that three more times. Two double crochets into your first stitch. One double crochet into your next. And then we want to put one double crochet into your next 31 stitches. And now from here, what we want to do is our repeats again. So two double crochets into the first stitch, one double crochet into the next stitch, and we want to do that four times. So one, two into your first, one into the next, and repeat three more times. And then we want to put one double crochet into the next 24 stitches. And there we are with round 12. All right, and now for round 13, what we want to do is chain one. Then we're gonna turn our work and we want to, still in back loops only, single crochet into your next 20 stitches. So go into your stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and go through both loops. And there's your single crochet. And now make 19 more of those, so 20 all together. All right, and then we want to do one double crochet into your next six stitches. And then we want to do two double crochets into your next stitch. And then one 
double crochet into your next two stitches and we want to repeat that three more times or I'm sorry two more times And then we want to put one double crochet into your next 33 stitches. Now we want to do our repeats again three more times. So the repeat is two double crochets into your first stitch, one double crochet into the next two stitches, and go ahead and repeat now two more times. And then from here we want to double crochet once into your next six stitches and then we're going to single crochet once into your next 20 stitches. And there we are for round 13. All right, and now for round 14, we want to chain one, turn our work, and then we're going to single crochet into your next 15 stitches. And then we are going to double crochet once into your next 17 stitches. And then from here, we're going to put two double crochets into our first stitch, and then one double crochet into our next two stitches. And we're going to repeat that one more time. Two double crochets into your first stitch, one double crochet into your next two stitches. And then we're going to double crochet once into your next 33 stitches. And then from here we're going to put two double crochets into our first stitch and then one double crochet into our next two stitches. And then we're just going to repeat that again. Two double crochets into our first stitch, one double crochet into our next two stitches. And then we're going to double crochet once into your next 17 stitches. And then we're going to single crochet once into your next 15 stitches. And now for round what we're going to be doing is working along the top edge of, as you can see, the bottoms where we've been working around. So this is that very top edge. And what we're going to do is simply we want to put 48 evenly spaced single crochets along the top edge. So to best do this, I find for every row that has a single crochet, you're going to put one single crochet into that row. 
to each of those. And then the rows that are double crochet rows, you're going to have to evenly space two single crochets into those. And we should have a total of 48 single crochets evenly spaced across the top. And there we are for round 15. Now what we're going to want to do for this piece right here will end up being the first front flap for our bag. So what we're going to want to do is tie off, if you're making just this first front flap, tie off here, go back to the beginning of the video and make another one of these pieces. And I'll meet you back here once we're ready to continue on for the second piece. All right, now we're on to our second piece that we're creating. So with the second piece, we do not want to cut off whenever we complete row 15. So for round 16, we're simply going to come right along the edge of the bag and once again, still working back loops only, we want to single crochet into each stitch coming down the side of our bag. So we're going to follow around where we had been working all the way up to this very top corner and you'll be ending up making 114 single crochet stitches. And there we are with round 16. And now for round 17, we'll chain one, turn our work, and once again, coming all the way back down around where we had been working around the bow, we're going to single crochet one time in back loops only, all the way around the entire outside of the bag. And this should end up having 114 single crochet stitches made. And there we are with the end of round 17. And for round 18, it's very simply a repeat of round 17. Chain one, turn your work, and then single crochet once into each stitch all the way around the entire opening for a total of 114 single crochets made. And there we are for round 18. Now what we're going to do 
for this is the second piece that you have made the first piece was the top flat so what we're going to do is tie off and then go back to the beginning and make another one to this point for just this second piece so it'll be your third piece actually but at the end once you get to here do not tie off all right, we'll be continuing to work it around and I'll see you back here as soon as we're to that point. All right, now, before we continue on, if you're going to make a liner for this bag, this one was slightly larger than other ones I have done, so I'm actually using two fat quarters uh, for the material. And what we're going to do is your second and third piece. I'm just using the third piece because that's where I just finished off. You're going to lay out your material on top of the two layers of fabric. And I'm going to just simply line it up. And then I'm going to cut around so that I have a half inch to three quarters seam around the entire circumference of this piece. Now you can actually go through and create on uh, like some tissue paper, an actual pattern stencil for it, however you wish to do it. I find this works, I've done it a few times, works fine for me, but everyone has their own preferences. So you can go ahead and do it how you want, but this is generally how you're gonna go ahead and create the liner for it. You'd uh, cut all this out. Now, once you have the liner cut off, you're gonna to wanna to create a half inch seam all the way around the two pieces. And yes, I'm actually going to use a zigzag hem also to try and prevent any unraveling so it holds together very nicely. We're gonna hold off on doing anything around the top border for now. We'll actually show you how to create that seam once we put that together inside of the bag later. So now we have our pieces two and three laid out together. And I've kind of lined them up so that the seam matches up very nicely together. Now you can do one option is to completely tie off uh, this end and use your darning needle and sew the two pieces together. I personally am not really a big fan of that way. Um, just because it's a lot more work, I think, in my opinion. Although sometimes it does create a desired stitch that we look for. But for this one, I'm just going to go ahead and use the slip stitch pattern or slip stitch method. So I'm going to lay my working end in between the two pieces. And then into my first stitch, I'm going to go into the front loop on one piece and then I'm going to go into the back loop of the second piece and then from here I'm going to yarn over and then I'm simply going to go through all three loops on my hook to create one stitch and then I'm going to repeat going into the front loop and then the back loop yarn over and go through all three loops and I'm going to continue doing this all the way around the side of our bag and what this does is it just creates in my opinion a very nice easy seam around the entire border I very much like the little look of it. It's not drawing away from the design of the bag, in my opinion. But we'll go ahead and do this all the way around.
now we have our two pieces all sewn together, slip stitched. So what I'm going to simply do is go ahead and make sure I keep my working end and don't uh, mix it up with any uh, scrap ends that we have. I'm simply going to slip stitch right across the top border until I get to our stitches for round 15. This is the top border where we did our 48 single crochets across the top. Now here I'm going to attach our first piece which was that first flat piece that didn't have those single crochets, three rows of single crochet stitches down all the ends that ended on round 15. And simply, I am going to slip stitch that piece right to our bag. Now I am simply using the same slip stitch method. If you you know, cut off and just use the darning needle and sewed it, you'll probably want to also still use that same method. I'm not a fan, but to each their own. So we've finished uh, attaching our top flap to our bag. What I'm going to do is simply slip stitch right into that first side of our first uh, single crochet row on the side. Then from there, I'm going to chain two. Or I'm sorry, chain three. And then what I'm going to do is evenly space six double crochets across this opening. Alright, so we have our chain three, that counts as a stitch, and then I added six double crochets along that opening. And then this is just the beginning of the one side for the strap. The other side, we'll actually be using our darning needle to attach, and that's where we'll be adding our welded metal rings, or D-rings, if you find your welded. Make sure welded otherwise they tend to fall apart. But now going forward on our strap, we chain three, turn our work, and then simply double crochet into the next six stitches. And your last one will be that third chain of your first chain three of the round. And then simply chain three, turn, and then double crochet into your next six stitches. Now for the strap, I am in fact working in both loops in order to do this because I just want the strap to be a bit stronger. And I do find that 
instead of doing just the, a lot of times for a pattern, there'll be just a chain and then you double crochet off of the chain. I find that the more weight that you add into your bag, it adds more pressure points throughout your strap. So I find this method actually helps disperse the weight much easier and evenly across the shoulder. So simply, we're going to keep repeating this until you get your desired uh, longest length of a strap that you wish to have for your bag. And I'll meet you back here once we are finished with creating this strap. And no, we do not need to attach this one to the other side because it'll actually be looping through the metal rings so it's adjustable. All right, now that we've made our strap to our desired length, what we're gonna do is take our two welded metal rings. Now I've created a slip knot and put it onto my hook. What I'm gonna do is simply put your hook right through both of your rings. We're gonna simply draw up our loop by going through the center of the ring and create a single crochet. And then I'm going to make a total of seven single crochets into the rings. So we're working around all both of our welded metal rings. All right, so now we have our seven single crochets. Then from here, I'm going to simply chain one, to chain three, and then we're gonna go into our next stitch, and we're gonna put a, a double crochet into there, and we're going to do one double crochet into each of those single crochets working in both loops all the way across until we've created a total of six double crochets. And then I'm just simply taking my working end and bringing it up and then chain three. And then I'm gonna use this end and I'm just gonna work it in just so I don't have to use the darning needle and weave it in later. And then after I've turned, I'm gonna simply double crochet into the next six stitches. Again, working in both loops. All right, now I'm just gonna go one more row. So chain three, turn, and then double crochet into your next six stitches. Now that we've got that, it's just a single crochets to attach the welded metal rings, and then three rows of double crochets. We're gonna tie off, but I'm gonna draw up the end, I'm gonna say about 18 inches long. Now we 
most likely won't use all 18 inches, but I would much rather have too much than not enough. And then I'm going to simply thread the end into my darning needle. Take our bag and we're gonna find that seam for the other side where we had our six rows and plus that slip stitch row. So as we can see here, here was the last single crochet from the previous row. And then we can see where the top meets. This is the side opposite of where the strap is at. So I'm simply going to go into there and so my little rings into that space. And I'm gonna evenly space it out also so that the rings actually cover the entire opening in this section. And yes, I'm going to go back over that whole opening again because I want to ensure that I have a very strong bond holding this right together. The uh, person I'm actually making this for, they're actually going to be carrying around um, usually a book and an iPad inside of this bag, which this design, they do tend to fit rather nicely, the iPad especially, into these bags. So I do want to make sure I make it so it's actually going to hold up to a little bit of weight being put into it. And I'll just go ahead and weave in that end. And then you'll want to go ahead and weave in any ends that you still have for your bag. Here our flap closing down. Our lovely strap and then to put your strap through you want to make sure there are no bends in your strap and simply go through both rings and then separate the rings and then go through the top ring or one closest to the center of the bag and it simply locks onto it to hold it from stretching out or coming undone. So therefore you can adjust it for as short or as long of a strap that you wish. And so you can go ahead and finish weaving in all of your ends and I'll meet you right back here as soon as I'm ready to show you how to attach the liner inside of the bag. All right, so now that we have our liner all sewn, the very last step to finish up this entire project is simply place your liner inside of your bag. Now the outer edges of your liner, I like to match those up to the very center of your straps. And then you'll probably want to pin also as you go along. And then for about the exact same amount of hem that you used on the sides, we simply want to take our top, open it up, and we want to fold over so that the seam 
is going to match to the inside of the bag. And then just pin it together and just go all the way around pinning it in and then just use sew it uh, like I'll be using a sewing machine right along the top seam right straight through also the crochet material and everything to attach it right inside of your bag. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and let me know with a little thumbs up like, or if you didn't, let me know also. Uh, let me know in the comments. And if you have yet to subscribe, go ahead and hit that little subscribe button and that little notification next to it. It'll give you a little heads up every time I post a new video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day.